In Zimbabwe, criticism is no longer tolerated. Opinion and activism are banned. If you want to meet critics of the government, well, you have to travel at night. We'd arranged to meet a man called Obert Masarure on a desolate stretch of road. He helps to run a teacher's union. Mr. Masarure represents teachers in rural Zimbabwe, and he's been advocating for higher salaries. But that's a dangerous job in this country, and it's made him a target. Hi, Obert. Hello, hi. Thank you for coming. Ah, okay. Oh, sorry for keeping you waiting. He had a bad limp and a story about a terrifying visit, which followed his request for an increase in pay. At least I saw eight people with gun toting, some with AK-47 guns, so one person with a pistol and their black mask is over their faces. These guys break into my house, they harass my wife, they're demanding to know where I was. The attack took place two days before we met him, and the union rep was clearly traumatized. And they took me to some bush, uh, they stripped me naked. After stripping me naked, uh, they were assaulting me all over my body, forcing me to roll all over the, the mud. They left me in the, uh, in, in the bush and naked, they took my wallet, they took everything that was on me. And they left me <laughs> naked. So literally this is around 3 a.m. Being left naked after being heavily assaulted by your own state. I only reached home around 6 a.m. My wife was devastated. My family was devastated. My wife was supposed to write an examination at 8 a.m. So you, you, you realize, so this is this was really brutal for me. But I think they are healing now, but I think you can still see all the marks are there. Mr. Masarore received a terrible beating, but he doesn't regret his appeal. Teachers are now paid the equivalent of one pound a day. You're punishing me for demanding that I need a salary which can pay the bills, a salary which can pay for the education of my kids, a salary which can pay for the health care of my family. That is not too much to ask for. Human rights lawyers told us over a thousand activists and ordinary citizens have been arrested in the past six months as part of a government drive to quash unrest. The economy here is close to collapse. But government officials say the lawyers are lying. These civic leaders, civic society leaders, you simply fake an abduction, you fake that you've been harassed, you've been tortured, and you know that these Europeans, they will pour a lot of money into your account. In January, Sky News was present when an ordinary citizen was beaten by members of the security forces. The assault took place in broad daylight on a residential street in Harare. <laughs> We found the victim in rural Zimbabwe. He said he was targeted because the soldiers thought he was a member of the opposition party, the MDC. Initially, the police force denied it, claiming our pictures were taken in 2016. But they've changed their minds, informing us that two officers have now been suspended. Still, our interviewee is skeptical. The dream of a democratic Zimbabwe is in tatters. Just ask five community workers who were jailed for trying to overthrow the state. We watched as they were released on bail. No one wants to greet or embrace the activists outside the front gate of the prison, so I think they're going to do it somewhere else. <laughs> they were locked up for three weeks on their return from a civil rights conference overseas, and the group seemed relieved. We are innocent citizens in a, in a supposed to be free Zimbabwe and you just get arrested for participating in a workshop. That's ridiculous. The government has accused you of an insurrection. <laughs> well, they are paranoid, they are clueless, they are trying to divert people from the attention of where is the bread, where are the salaries, where is employment. A taste of freedom. A taste of freedom.
on a dirt track near Chickaruby Jail. But these advocates and activists know it could be brief. John Sparks, Sky News in Zimbabwe.